to say, hey, I've got a problem and I want to solve it. And guess what? Other people with similar problems are attracted to us. I've had clients that have been abused go into abusive relationships time and time and time again. There have even been psychological studies where a woman who was known to attract men that caused wife beating to go into a party where they knew there was one man that was a wife beater. Not only did that woman go and find that man, she left the party with him. This starts to suddenly explain a lot of psychological stuff. And when we look at the human body field and what is going on. So the mind, the body, the spirit, and we change our social behavior and we react differently to our environment, all in an effort to resolve the original conflict shock. Now, some of you are probably going, ching, you know, this is starting, the penny starting to drop. That perhaps there's something going on inside our bodies that we can start to look at. And this is what we've found more and more. We've noticed this. Because if we look at the resonation of man and women, this shock resonates through the heart, changing how we interact with everything and everybody in our world. That's pretty amazing, isn't it? Have you ever been through a shock yourself and noticed how your psychology changes, your behavior changes? Have you ever noticed that after a shock you obsess? <laughs> Have you ever noticed that? Have you ever noticed that you might get cold feet and cold hands? Have you ever noticed that you have excessive amounts of energy? Yeah. These are all part of what's going on. Amazing, isn't it? Absolutely amazing. And what we now know, now through NES, and also through the Living Matrix, that what is going on when we go through a shock, that the body is transmitting this information via the heart out into the world, through the heart math. Institute, they've, they've given us this wonderful opportunity to look inside and understand what is going on. So this shock resonates through the heart, changing how we interact with everything and everybody in our world. And it even attracts like energy people. The people all have a similar resonance at some level. It's no joke that you are resonating at a certain frequency, otherwise you wouldn't be here. Yeah. So here are some examples of possible shocks. They're interesting. I worked with a guy uh, at the Living Matrix who, um, he told me, he said, uh, look, um, Richard, you know, I, he told me his story, it's quite interesting. I'm a medical doctor, he said, and um, you know I've been suffering from a horrible liver virus, and uh, can you help? And I went, yep, I think I probably can. And I started to ask him various questions, and I found out that he'd had a shock. And this particular shock was his wife turned around to him one day after he came home from work and said, oh, by the way, I'm sleeping with your best friend. This shocked him massively. <laughs> And he then ran around the house and beat the house up, phoned up the friend and said, come on over, uh, I want to talk to you. Anyway, this changed everything in his life, absolutely everything, including how he looked at men and women sexually. Amazing. So it changed his whole behavior. This was a man that was like, you know, big, burly man. Everything changed, even his body posture changed. He then had a resolution of this conflict a year later and ended up with a viral infection, which almost killed him, but he survived it. And he wanted to know why the disease was there. And I was able to tell him, but that was the cause. The other one, I, I haven't worked with anybody who's been in a car like that, but um, it's obvious that someone not being able to get out alive is, is uh, quite interesting. Uh, last year, when we were in Spain, I showed that particular slide, and uh, one of the audience members actually turned around to me and said, I've been through that experience, and she told me about it. I worked with her, we resolved the conflict shock, which she thought she'd done, um, actually at lunchtime, 
after my lecture. And she then thanked me at the end of the training. She said, uh, you know what? I've had the worst possible streaming cold since I worked with you. But I was able to tell her why. You betrayed my trust, go away, is another example of diagnostic shock that often goes on when we are in a situation with um, the medical profession. It explains the dreaded metastases that are secondary cancers. But you see, I told you, I said, because this is all building up to something or other that is important that I want you to get, is that what is amazing is that we get this trapped energy. It is an energy sphere. But energy, and I got this directly from Peter Fraser one day when I was over in Spain. He said, uh, I know why we can see the energy. Because I, I talked to him about brain CT scans, that we actually can start to read brain CT scans because it appears that there are rings that are showing the trapped energy. And he said, you know why? It's because trapped emotion is radiating at the same frequency as x-rays. Because you can't see these rings on MRIs, magnetic resonance machines. And so, as I said, we can see it in the embryology. We can see it in the brain as we can see it in the body. So I have some pictures of that. And it's x-rays resonate at the same frequency as emotions. But what we actually see are not spheres. It's not a 3D moving hologram, which is how we know it to be from the living matrix and the work of Peter. It's actually, we're only seeing a slice of it. So we're only seeing the slice of what is going on inside the brain, but it still works. And we have some examples here, which I'd like to show you. So here we have the brain stem, right at the bottom just at the top of the spinal cord at the bottom of the brain. And here is all to do with digestion. And you'll see these screens on the Nest ProVision. And this actually is to do with small intestine irritable bowel syndrome repeating itself over and over again. I've drawn another little circle here. You might just be able to see that. Learning to read brain CTs is an art and a science. It's taken me three years and I'm still not there. But the good news is we don't need a brain CT in order to understand what's going on inside a client, by the way. Rob had nephrotic syndrome. Nephrotic syndrome is where you blow up with excessive water. The particular point I'm showing you on this CT scan is to do with the kidney collecting tubules. And this boy had testicles the size of rugby balls. He couldn't go to school. He stayed at home quite a lot. He's one of the medicine health coaches. At age 18, it suddenly disappeared. If you don't know what kidney collecting tubules are like, then I have another picture. But basically, it's, there are many rings here. And it's all to do with an abandonment isolation conflict. In fact, most diseases that are really chronic have something to do with the kidney collecting tubules, which you will find out when you start to treat your clients and you get the really difficult cases if you want to go that way. Okay. And this is what it looks like. This is the same girl. She had an abandonment isolation conflict. I worked with her. We found out what the abandonment isolation conflict was and she's almost back to what she was before. This is what it does. She put on this weight literally overnight. She blew up like a balloon. And it wasn't fat. It was water. Amazing. And this is all to do with the kidney collecting tubules. The breast glands. Here we can see, this is, accounts for 27% of all cancers in the breast. And this particular point, embryologically, directly links to the breast. And this is the mammary glands. And I actually have a picture of, of this. So if some of you are slightly squeamish, then uh, please turn away now. Um, but basically, it's to do with a worry conflict with the sun. Here is a, a breast, obviously, and a brain CT of this particular woman. And you can see the actual organ being affected by the, uh, the cancer here. 
This was um, read by my colleague, Dr. Anton Bader, who re reads brain CTs. Here's another interesting story, a little boy that um, uh, he had a, a brain cancer. His mother came to see me and said, why did he have this brain cancer? I read the CT with Dr. Bader, and we found out that it was all to do with uh, the integrity being challenged. And I phoned up the mum and spoke to the boy and said, look, you know, were you around a specific time, did you have a problem with warts on your feet? And he said, oh yes, yes I do. I, I actually have that problem even now. And I found out that it was all into related with a shock that he had where he was kicking a hole in a wall during playtime when he was about six. And he was the type of boy who never lied, ever. And he was taken up to the headmaster with his friends, and the headmaster said, you made that hole in the wall. And he said, no, I did not. The hole was already there. I did kick at it, but I didn't make the hole. And the headmaster accused him of being a liar. And at that point, in order to protect himself, the body did something amazing. It produced extra thin layer, a thick layer of skin, which were warts which, when they resolved themselves, which we'll talk about in a moment, they produced a tumor in the brain. And then what happened was he was operated on. Now, he could have died before the operation uh, because there were various things that were going on. But um, <clears throat> he had chemotherapy and radiotherapy, and he did survive that, uh, but it's not a good story. So let's go on to ovaries. Um, Let's look. Here's the ovaries. It's right inside. The ovaries are to do with the medulla area, and they're also to do with profound loss. And here's a ring here, right here. You can just about see it. All to do with the ovaries. And this was causing excessive issues with period pain. The lady could not conceive. We solved that, and now she has children. A friend of mine called Tim, diabetes. I told you about the other boy with diabetes. And we can see a beautiful ring here in the point that directly relates to, the, to diabetes. Amazing. All to do with uh, resistance conflicts, being bullied, essentially. Life not being sweet enough is really a good metaphor for it. <coughs> and also, Birgitta had no energy. She came to see me, and this girl would be sitting in a training room and she'd just be asleep half the time. And she told me that she would complain of um, feeding her son and she would literally fall asleep while feeding her son like this and the son would tap her on the head and say, wake up. I looked at her brain CT and said, you have a thyroid problem. And sure enough, when we solved the underlying conflict, the emotional conflict behind the thyroid problem, she got her energy back. Lucille suffered from anxiety. This was a girl who came to see me first time around. I never realized that people actually suffer horrendously with this particular disease. Disease or whatever, neurosis. And uh, we solved that and now she's calm, collected. She's gone leaps and bound in her understanding of uh, therapies and things like that. She's amazing. Um, and we found out why this occurred. I was reading her brain CT and phoned her up and said, you suffer from anxiety, don't you? And she said, how did you know? We did some therapy on that and solved the problem. In fact, depression, mania, all those other problems that are related to psychological disorders actually have their root <coughs> in, uh, in the cortex. But I want to talk to you a little bit about something else that's very interesting called disease as a process. The other thing that I think is a bit unique is that, did you know that disease is a process? That it goes from one thing to another to another? You see, the medical profession and most people look at disease in isolation. They say that there is only one thing going on at any one time. And so when you go and see the doctor, they say, ah, you have this symptom, therefore you have this disease. We give you a drug, goodbye. But actually, disease is far more complex than that. But just to explain what I mean by a process, 
And what we've done with metamedicine is we've turned disease back <coughs> from something that's static into a process. It's like thinking of the Beatles song. Now, I know you're from many people from Germany, but you may have heard the Beatles song because they were here. And you know the song, eight days a week. You know this song, don't you? Eight days a week. And that's all the bit that you can remember, can't you? That's probably about it. Eight days a week. But you know, <laughs> there's a whole song. And it goes like this, I'll do the first bit. Ooh, I need your love, babe. Guess you know it's true. Hope you need my love, babe, just like I need you. Hold me, love me, hold me, love me. I ain't got nothing but love, babe. There's a bit, eight days a week. But what we're looking at, for, as far as the medical profession are concerned, is they have looked at disease and gone, eight days a week. That's it. Ah, oh, yes, you're coming, yes, uh, lovely symptoms. Eight days a week, here's your pill. Bye. <coughs> Oh, I got rid of them in less than five minutes. I've got another two minutes to go out and have a cigarette. Next one. So there's a whole song, you see, behind disease. It isn't just eight days a week. Disease is like a song. It has a start, a middle, and an end. With various instruments in the background to support it. That's what disease really is. And you know what's really crazy? One, we can see that a shock actually causes disease. We can see that inside the brain. We can see it inside the body. We know that the two are interrelated, but disease is also a process as well. And that embryology, the medical profession understand embryology, but also there's something else that's really crazy that makes total sense as far as medicine is concerned, is there seems to be a process that there is a, st after the stressful event, we go into stress. And we have symptoms like a stressed body, obsessive thinking, sleeplessness, a lack of appetite, a loss of weight, cold body and extremities, high blood pressure, contracted blood vessels, nervous and cold perspiration. We have all these symptoms. Guess what this is called in traditional medicine? The sympathetic nervous system. And then after this, we go into a rest phase and these are the symptoms. Fatigue and tiredness, good appetite, weight gain, warm body and extremities, low blood pressure, slow heart rate, wide blood vessels, perspiration, hot skin and body, and a fever. That's the rest phase. Guess what this is called? The parasympathetic nervous system. But in medicine, they acknowledge that there are two types of nervous system active. But they've never done this. Who? Oh, they're joined together. Whoa! They've never done that. Give, give credit where credit's due. Hammer did notice this. But I'm sure many other doctors have and didn't say anything. Okay, and we can prove this now as well. Scientifically, a cell cannot be in a stress state and repairing itself at the same time. Again, our friend Bruce Lipton. I mean, where was this guy? What the hell was he doing? But he, he's come up with various things that seem to prove categorically what we're talking about. What causes a chronic disease, though, is this, and allergies. After a shock, everything during that time gets stored. We know that. After the Udin moment, this unexpected, dramatic, isolating conflict shock, where we have no strategy for dealing with thing, things, gets stored, and the slightest reminder can trigger the whole event off again and again and again. One of the ladies here, she uh, came across some seafood and just the smell of it caused an allergic reaction. But at some time in her life, she was close to seafood and basically she had a reaction at um, a shock of some sort. Now, we're going to get too complicated to talk about uh, epigenetics, but essentially it could have been passed down through her family line somewhere some other type of shock, but essentially 
she has a shock. We can explain with metamedicine allergies. We can explain repeating diseases. We can start to explain irritable bowel syndromes, multiple sclerosis, chronic fatigue syndromes, Parkinson's. All these things all have a beautiful process to them. 